My name is Rishkesh Kirtikar, working in India on a project for developing alternate education methods for children and the present paper is an outcome of this project. The title of the paper is A Problem Solving Approach for Science Learning, which provides a new method for science education in the initial stages where children begin to understand science concepts and also begin to understand what is science and what is its nature. Today the traditional teaching methods are widely challenged for the inability for a holistic learning among children. The emphasis is merely on theoretical understanding of concepts where the teacher is solely responsible for learning to take place. It lacks an active learning environment and children are unable to understand the application and actual use of knowledge in daily lives. Learning is directed towards only a preparation for exams and naturally leads to a lack of motivation. It gives an idea of education to be a very serious business that is disconnected from the everyday world. These are the most fundamental problems in education and in spite of the innumerable innovations, we are unable to find a solution that can be implemented on a large scale and it can replace the traditional practices. The present method is an effort to find an alternative that can lead to a holistic development of children beyond acquiring of knowledge. Its simple objective is to develop an activity-centered model for science learning. However, it's not about using activities for teaching of concepts or as a support aid to curriculum that are widely used today in various innovations. Activities are of primary importance here, while the aim is to derive a method that is child-initiated and allows him the freedom to in doing things that the following a pre-planned curriculum. This is necessary for genuine thinking to take place and develop an interest in science. Knowledge has to be acquired only when it is of actual meaning in activities and is useful that gives knowledge its actual value. The project is being conducted in a small village in India for the past one year. It is working with school going children of 10 to 12 years of age from 5th to 7th grade. It conducts regular sessions with around 15 children of the village. Making science based toy models are the main activities of the group. Working on various science principles, hundreds of such toys have been designed by Professor Arvind Gupta, a scientist turned toy maker in India. They are low cost and can be made from easily available materials such as the first toy, which is a balloon car. It can be made of paper cup, cardboard wheels, balloons, straws, etc. It is a car working on the Newton's third law of motion, that is, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The balloon can be blown from the straw attached to it and after leaving it, the car runs to the opposite direction of the airflow. They have been found to be highly exciting activities among children. Similarly, there are various other toys working on various other science principles. The straw spinner, the musical balloon made from a plastic box, a water pump made from a used up pen, toy of persistence of vision, a simple DC motor and so on. Children choose and work independently on these activities by referring to books and other uh, sources, gradually putting their own ideas and making new models. As stated before, the aim is not to teach the science behind toys or motivate children to think through questioning. Activities have to lead to a natural learning of science and this is where the problem solving approach comes in the picture. Making of such toys isn't a smooth process but a process of working and reworking to come up with a better model. Children generally like to work with practical things and may not directly show interest or curiosity about science. However, the problems that children face while working on their tasks naturally ask them to understand science. One cannot make a perfect model at the first attempt but has to keep on improving by working on it. For example, while making the balloon car, it was found that it ran slow or did not run at all in the children's initial attempts. I found various reasons to it mentioned here in the second column behind which were various science principles. One reason can be a block in the airflow through the straw which can be due to tightly joining the balloon by a rubber band. It asks to consciously know that air provides the push to the car and thus helps to work on solutions accordingly. Here, it's not directly possible to lead to the principle of law of motion but can later be understood through discussions and readings. There can be various other reasons behind the car not running or other problems that ask to understand still other science concepts. Sometimes the car tilts in the front after blowing the balloon which is due to the weight of the air. 
it helps the child to know the this air property and about the center of gravity which is which then guides the working on the solutions the single toy can cover many concepts that are otherwise taught in separate lessons throughout the year that are disconnected to, to each other the range of toys children make and problems in them opens up opportunity for a new way of science learning the working on problems is a natural process such a tool of writing down problems in a chart can become more useful in case of making complex models systematizing the process it gives the child a framework for thinking and also reflects on the process and learning taking place toys can be helpful for the physics part of science education however other simple activities like making a garden in the community or engaging in agricultural activities develops learning about plants soil their growing processes effects of climate on them learning on climate earth atmosphere etc the use of problem solving method in such activities is however yet to be experimented under the present project the method not only leads to science learning but generates range of skills among children identifying problems observing facts finding out reasons analyzing them to find solutions etc all is what makes a dynamic learning environment more important it is it gives an opportunity to discover the science by self and knowing that knowledge isn't an already existing entity but something to be searched for and is all around everywhere in small things rather only in smart science books and laboratories thus the learning process starts from experiencing and hands on activities rather through a preplanned curriculum the skills that are put in the process then lead to knowledge it is thus a process from practice to theory and from unorganized thinking to an organized form of knowledge our innovations so far have been mostly centered on knowledge and curriculum as a starting point for which methods are developed knowledge is rather only a natural outcome of working on practical things books can become meaningful and useful only when they are directly related to what one has already done to talk about its advantages it provides a highly cost efficient model that can be implemented on a large scale being a child initiated method the teacher is not required to employ new teaching strategies but only has to be a facilitator in the process the child no more remains a follower of the teacher or the curriculum but they play the more the role of a guide integration of theory and practice which is one of the biggest challenges in education pedagogy can be achieved in this present model beyond knowledge there is a development of creativity thinking and other skills among children and the joy of discovery one can understand the interrelationships of concepts conveying that the world is not divided in concepts or subjects but a common whole it is also a disable friendly model for the visually challenged or hearing impaired who can equally work on activities along with other children a mixed group at the educational stage can only lead to a disabled friendly society later its main disadvantage is that it cannot be incorporated in the formal schools due to difference in both framework of operations as the method is still in its experimental stage its various pedagogical concerns are yet to be understood i am thankful for giving me this opportunity to present